السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونسلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب ذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ولما سلوا وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولان محمد تب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم last I guess four weeks we've been talking about the milad or the maulid of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, and before that, for almost eight weeks, we had been talking about the events leading up to Karbala. And we just started talking about the trip or the journey of Imam Hussein <coughs> from Mecca to Kufa. Uh, and then Rabi al came and so we shifted gears. Uh, the intention is to go back to that, but there are a couple of things that I want to talk about today before <coughs> we go back to talking about Imam Hussein a.s. And this is something that we mentioned or alluded to you know, at the Milad program last Saturday as well as the Friday before. And that is, you know, looking at Rasulullah, so some understanding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the first creation of Allah. You know, and so if I look at this, you know, because there is a, a group that says, no, the first creation was the Qalam. And if you mention or say that Rasulullah was the first creation, then they get very upset. Which in itself should show you its importance. You know, because why are they getting upset? You know, if it's not a big issue, then why are you getting upset? Uh, you know, just like celebrating the Mawlid or the Milad of Rasulullah is a major issue. Otherwise, why do they get upset? You know, that shows you its significance. As we mentioned, you know, the Mawlid or celebrating the Milad of Rasulullah some teaches us two things. One is that he is not Allah, because Allah is not born. And the second is that he is not like us. Not even his birth is like our birth. The proof that they bring, you know, when they talk about, oh, you know, no, it's the pen. They say the qalam. Is hadith in Sayy Bukhari, where Jabir ibn Abdullah, Radiallahu he asked Rasulullah Rasulullah what is the first creation of Allah? And in that hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, Rasulullah answers Qalam, the pen. And if I only look at this much of the hadith, then I could argue that maybe they're right. But even if I look at the rest of the hadith, that in itself tells me that no, they're not right. That there was something before the Qalam. Because in that hadith, when Rasulullah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the pen, then he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the pen to write. And the pen asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what shall I write? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the pen to write whatever is to happen, whatever is to come, and whatever has already happened. So if there was not anything that happened before it, there's no need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, say, to tell the pen to write whatever has already happened. So that in itself tells you that yes, definitely something happened before this, before the pen. And if I look at it from a different perspective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the last ayat of Surah Baqarah, right at the beginning, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not place any burden on any nafs more than what it can bear. 
or more than what it can do. And we're going to come back to this point later, but it's important. Anything that we are commanded to do, before we were commanded to do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already put place within us the ability to do it. So if we don't do it, then that's on us. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the pen to write whatever came before it. Which tells us that the pen has the ability to write because something did come before it. Because otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have commanded the pen to write what came before. So this hadith is in Sayyid Bukhari. One of the teachers of Imam Bukhari is Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. Rahmatullah and one of his teachers is the great Muhaddis Abdul Razak. And in Musannaf Abdul Razak, there is a hadith again where Jabir ibn Abdullah, he asked Rasulullah, they are Rasulullah, what was the first creation? And Rasulullah answers him, Nur Nabiyaka. The nur of your Nabi. And then from that light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created four other lights. The qalam, the pen, the law, the tablet, the kursi, the throne. And then the fourth he used to now create other things. So if we look at this hadith, then it makes it very clear to us that when Jabir Radio is asking Rasulullah what was the first, he's asking what was the first from those four. Which is why Rasulullah answered the qalam, because he'd already asked what was the real first, which is the nur or the light of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which is also interesting. Because when the Saudis, when they reprinted Musannaf Abdul Razak, they took this hadith out. And then when people called them out on it, then even before they reprinted it correctly, they started this propaganda that, oh, this hadith is weak. So again, if there's no significance to Rasulullah being first, then why is it such a big issue for them? Because again, it also shows us that he's not like us and we are not like him. If I look at the Qur'an, so this is the direct proof from the word of Rasulullah so, so. If I look at the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in various ways indirectly. One is he refers to Rasulullah so, so, as shahid, as a witness. Witness over what? Witness over all of creation. He is the only witness. In reality, he is the only witness. He is a witness over all of creation, you know. And so if I ask, okay, well, if, you, if a person goes to court and he tells the judge, I am a witness to this case. So the judge asks him, were you there? And he says, no. He said, did you see what happened? And he says, no. What does the judge say? It's hearsay. This, you're not a witness. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Rasulullah shahid. He is a witness. When we say the kalma, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. Technically, I'm not a witness because I've not seen Allah. And anyone here who claims to see Allah, have, has seen Allah, is a liar. And then we say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. And Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger and his slave, his servant. Again, how can I bear witness to this? Have I seen a Rasulullah? No. So how do we bear witness to Allah? Other than the one who is the true witness to Allah has told us, who is Rasulullah 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I am a witness to Rasulullah sallallahu because through the generations, reliable people have passed this on to me. In the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, and this is a verse we've talked about many times before, just looking at it from a different perspective today. In verse number 81, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا عَتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَا تَنْسُرُنَّ قَالَ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِسْرِي قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا قَالَ فَاشْهَدُوا وَأَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and he says and remember when I took an oath or a covenant from the prophets <clears throat> yeah, and this again, wa id, you know, we've talked about this over and over. Wa id is is very interesting. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala refers to Rasulullah and remember when I did this. You know, wa id wa id qal Rabbuka lil malaikati ni jailun fil arudi khalifa. And remember when I when I said to the angels, when and remember when your Lord said to the angels. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala refers to Himself as the Lord of Muhammad. Sallallahu He swears by his beloved. And how does he swear? Or rather, he swears by himself as the Lord of his beloved. Fala wa rabbika. No, by your Lord, O oh my beloved. He could have simply said, I swear by my honor, or I swear by myself, or something else. No, he refers to himself as the Lord of Muhammad. Many times in the Quran. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There he says, and remember when I took, uh, when I said to the angels, again, you know, the question comes up, who can I say this to? Uh, if I say this to Nadir, that oh, remember when when we shot the deer? Well, I can't say that to him because he wasn't there. The only one that, that that can be said to is the one who was there and, and as a witness to it. So I could say that to Mujib, remember when you shot the deer and it dropped in its tracks. Because the, only, the two of us were the only ones there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Rasulullah so multiple times, and, and remember when this happened. And remember when I did this. Which tells us, that Rasulullah Sallallahu is a witness to whatever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying. So when He says here, "Wa id akhad Allah mithaq al nabiina," and remember when I took the covenant from the prophets, "La ma ateetukum min kitabin wa hikma." So now Rasulullah Sallallahu is a witness to it, but He's more than a witness to this. He is a witness to this oath that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala takes from the prophets. This is before anybody is sent here to the earth. Because at this point, yeah, they're the souls of the prophets, but they're not officially given prophethood. His Allah says, and, and I give that, that uh, remember when I took the oath from the prophets, that I will give you a book and, and wisdom. Meaning I will make you a prophet. Min kitabi hukma. ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا And then comes to you this Rasul. You know, he doesn't even refer to Rasulullah as a Nabi. He refers to him as a Rasul. And a Rasul is above Nabi. So the other prophets are about to be given prophethood and yet Rasulullah is already Rasul. Before any of them. ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لَمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَا تَنْسُرُنَّ 
So this messenger comes and he testifies to what you have been given. Then Allah Subhanahu says, "La tut la bihi wa la tansurunna." You believe in him, and you give him help, and you help him. And then the rest of the verse where he says, "Qala qala aqrartum wa akhtum ala dalik isri." The qala aqrartum. وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ ذَلِكُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ إِسْرِي That do you take this oath of mine binding upon you? قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا They say what? They said yes, we take this oath as binding. And then he says قَالَ فَشْهَدُوا أَنَا مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ Then be a witness over each other that you have taken this oath and promised this. And I am a witness over you all. You know, this shows us, you know, the level and the significance of the risala or the prophethood and the and the messengership of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, Sheikh. But the other aspect of this, you know, he asked the prophets. He says that. You know, he says to them that I will send you know, that when this messenger comes to you, testifying to what you have. La believe in him. You will believe in him. Wala and you will help him. When he comes, you will believe in him, and you will help him. One of the ways that they believed in him and they helped him was every prophet told his nation about the coming of Rasulullah. <laughs> every prophet, some of them by his signs and some of them by names, such as Ahmad or various other names that he has given. But they, all of them, without exception, told their people about the coming of Rasulullah. So, you know, three things that every prophet told his nation. One, of course, is Allah. The other is Rasulullah. And the third is Dajjal. Whose fitna we are living in today. But the other interesting aspect of this is the verse says that when he comes. So technically he had not come. You know, when, the, when Adam al -Islam was there, even though the nur of Rasulullah is there, is present. But technically he has not come to testify to their truthfulness and the message that they have brought. When Musa al-Islam came, again, technically Rasulullah is not there. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that when he comes, you will believe in him and you will testify him to, uh, or, and you will help him. So the other interesting aspect, again, we get back to what we spoke about early on. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not place any burden or does not give any command other than what can be fulfilled. So before he says anything, before he commands anything from us or any expectation from us, again he has given us the ability to do that first. Then the command comes. Yet here he's telling the prophets that when he comes, you will believe in him and you will help him. And yet, he already knows that he won't send this prophet, this messenger, this Rasul, until they are all in their graves. Of course, with the exception of Enoch or Idris salam, and Isa. Salam. All the rest of them are in their graves. And yet they have to believe in him and help him. So how can they believe in him? You know, because the first requirement for believing is to know. 
You can't believe in something you don't know. In Islam, you know, I know the, that the Quran is the word of Allah. So now I believe in it. I know Rasulullah has come and he is the last messenger. And that he is the messenger of Allah. So I believe in him. I know of the existence of Allah through what Rasulullah has taught, taught us. So I believe in him. <coughs> so I have to know first in order to believe. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling all of these prophets that when he comes, and yet he came after all of them, and they're already in their graves. And he doesn't burden anyone with what they can't do. Which means that they already, they knew. When the Rasulullah Sallallahu came, they knew. Otherwise, how can they believe? If they didn't know, then how could they believe? So he came and they knew. In their graves, they knew. And then the other part of the command is to help him. Again, all of them are in their graves. Isa al-Islam is on the second heaven. Idris al-Islam is on the fourth heaven. So how are they going to help him? But the bigger question really is, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command them to help him if they couldn't help him? Which tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given them the authority to be able to help him. But then the other part of this question comes, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling them to help him? Why can't he help him himself? The ultimate helper is Allah. Yet he's commanding the prophets to help Rasulullah. So he's commanding the prophets to help Rasulullah. So again, why is he going to command them something that they cannot do? That he has not given them the ability to do. If he's made the command, Latansurunna, help him, then that means he's already given them the ability, even from their graves, to help him. They are there making dua for him. Is he in need of their dua? No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this system, and he's teaching us this system. So that those who love him know that he has given his lovers the authority to help other lovers. Even from the grave. You know, we have this concept that, oh, they're dead and gone. Which is the exact opposite of what Allah subhanahu wa is teaching us in the Quran. This is the month of Rabi Thani. This is the month of the celebration of Sayyid Abdul Qadir Jilani. Rahmatullah alayhi. So even the lovers of Allah and His Messenger know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the authority to also help these lovers. You know, He's teaching us from, from what He's done for the, the Prophets. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu you know, one time Ali Radian was was saddened. Uh, even then, you had people that were jealous of the status of Ali. Radiallahu. Mm-hmm. And this is why Rasulullah said that only a, a believer or a mu'min will love you and only a hypocrite will have animosity against you. So even then you had this issue. So one time he was saddened and Rasulullah says, and he says to him, he says, Oh Ali. Why are you sad? The first four to enter Jannah will be myself, you, and my two sons, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. And then along with them, along with us, these four, will be their offspring. The progeny that comes. 
those connected to them through blood. And then their wives. And then their lovers. So if we don't love them, we have no connection with them, then we should not expect any help from them. And those who also yell out, oh, they can't do anything for you. They're dead and gone. Like the soul is, is annihilated at the time of death. That's, what they, that's the way they make it seem. Yet again, Allah SWT is teaching us this system. That if you have that connection with those before you, even those before you can help you. Again, Rasulullah is Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah. He is Habib Allah. He is the beloved of Allah. Allah is enough for him. And yet Allah SWT is ordering the other prophets help him. Because this is a system. You know, we, we are put here to help each other. And if we deny that, oh, you know, you know that, oh, oh, you know, only Allah, uh, I'll only accept help from Allah. Then we need to quit breathing. You know, because Allah is the one who gives life, period. So why do you need to breathe? Quit eating. You know, when, when the food is placed, these are the first people to run and, and grab the food. And yet they tell, oh no, you know. I don't need anything else. Well, if you don't need anything else, then don't eat. But again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a system, and to deny that system is also a disbelief. You know, if I put my hand in the fire, and say only Allah burns, well, you know, I shouldn't be crying when my hand is burning. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the system, and we need to acknowledge the system. And to deny the system, again, is part of disbelief. The, you know, we, again, looking back, you know, Sayyid Abdul Qadi Jilani Rahmatullah. You know, if you look at all of the Salasil, you know, whether you know, as far as the spiritual lineages that come through Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether it's Qadri, Chishti, Sahuwardi, uh, Shadli, um, uh, Naqshbandi and many many others all of them except Sayyidina Abdul Qadri Jilani it doesn't matter you know, they all have a connection with him. Of course, his connection is direct with, or, you know, his connection from the blood lineage, he's the, he is the, his, on his father's side, he's from the family of Imam Hussein, I mean, Imam Hassan, and on his mother's side, he's from the lineage of Imam Hussein, so he say the Tarfain. He has that blood connection with Rasulullah on both sides. But not just the blood connection, is that he fulfilled the honor of this blood. You know, because there are many people, oh, you know, I'm related to so-and-so. Well, then why are you behaving like this? Hmm? That still, as far as Sayyid are concerned, just because they're misbehaving, you know, doesn't give us the right to criticize them unless their misbehavior leads them to kufr. Then like Allah SWT said to Nuh a.s. that he is not your son. When he said, oh Allah, what about my son? He says, Allah says he's not your son. Because his actions are not worthy of you. So when Allah SWT gives this honor to somebody, you know, of being Sayyid, then the responsibility is also great. 
the same way, you know, somebody says, oh, I'm from the lineage of Abu Bakr Siddiq or Omar Farooq or somebody else. Again, you know, if you're not honoring that lineage, then you have no right to claim that lineage. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand. May He give us His true love and the love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His family, His companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. You know, and may He allow us to honor His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who have not made sunnah, go and make sunnah, inshallah.